Okay, so in question 14, we have a sort of biological uh, dynamic, a uh, rotation dynamic problem. So it's a side dumbbell raise, that's sort of the context. The person holds a dumbbell in their hand and then begins with their arm at their side and then they rotate the arm out to the side, working the uh, sort of the shoulder muscle, working uh, the deltoid, and uh, till the arm is parallel with the ground. And then we're sort of looking at one uh, one particular instant in that particular exercise. We're told that the arm and hand have a total length of 85 centimeters, and the center of mass of the arm and hand is 38 centimeters in the shoulder joint. So we're not treating it purely as a uniform rod. That the center of mass of the arm and hand is closer to the shoulder, which probably makes sense, um, because most of the mass is probably in the tricep and bicep. And the arm and hand have a mass of 4 kgs and the dumbbell exerts a downward force of 41 newtons uh, downward force at the end uh, of the arm and hand and then we're told the delta muscle attaches 5 centimeters in the shoulder joint and pulls at an angle of 14 degrees from the arm um, at the instant shown the arm is 30 degrees below the horizontal and has an angular acceleration positive 1.29 the moment inertia of the arm is this What's the size of the deltoid force? Okay, so quite a complex problem. Um, I will do some work on this page, but then I'll do uh, most of the work just on a blank page, just given how complex the problem is. But I'll start with uh, thinking about what we're, so we're trying to solve the size of the deltoid force. This is going to be a torque problem, but we where we have uh, multiple forces on the arm, so we'd have a shoulder joint force, but I'll place the pivot here, so I don't need to worry about the shoulder joint force. There's a deltoid force, there's a weight force by the arm itself, and another uh, force by the dumbbell. And um, they're going to lead up. You know, the deltoid has a counterclockwise torque. The dumbbell for dumbbell force and the weight force are clockwise torques, but there is a net torque on the arm, and we can. I'll use this page to go ahead and solve at least for that. So. We do know that the net torque is I times alpha, and we're given both of these particular terms in this, in this question. So, we're given at the moment inertia is 0.971 kgs meters squared times the alpha that's given here in correct units, radians per second squared. So, the net torque is pretty small, uh, 1.25. Newton meters. And what this net torque will be equal to, think about the vectors, is going to be torque of the, the deltoid plus the torque due to the weight of the arm plus uh, the torque due to the dumbbell. Um, and uh, that's what so we can figure out the deltoid force if we can figure out the size of the deltoid torque. And that will be basically torque net minus um, the torque weight minus the torque dumbbell. We've got to be careful about the signs once we get to that. Um, and once we get to that part of the problem. But uh, this is all I'll do on this page. And I'll, do, I'll refer back to this page once uh, when I'm drawing the, uh, on a blank page. I'll refer, refer back to these values. So. Let's just sort of start with something blank here. Give us some room. Okay. And I'll start maybe with a picture. Okay, so I've got a picture up here of the the arm. on the three forces that we're going to be considering in this example. So we've got the deltoid force. So I'll do F deltoid. And we've got the weight, not exactly at the center, but we are given its uh, position. So this is the weight force. And then there's another downward vertical force over here due to the Dumbbell, maybe I'll label this as uppercase D, just not to confuse it with the deltoid. 
and hopefully it's not okay. We don't not carry out a drag force, but I'm just using. And I don't want to confuse the, the two of these. Okay, so in this particular problem, hopefully you can see about if I place the pivot at the shoulder joint, the sort of natural pivot of the arm, the deltoid uh, force is leading to a counterclockwise torque, and the uh, weight is going to be clockwise, and the deltoid force is also going to be clockwise. But we do have a net torque in this example, so these some of these three torques do not sum to zero because the arm is actually accelerating. So we I'm going to figure out the size of this torque um, due to the uh, weight and then the size of the torque due to the uh, deltoid. So I'm going to listen in a little more detail. The OR vector for the um, weight force and then points from the drawn from the pivot down to where the weight force acts. I'll draw my weight force here. So I want to do it. So this is RW. So I'm told in the problem that this is 38 centimeters. So the center mass of the arm and hand is 38 centimeters from the shoulder joint. So I know this is 0.38 meters. I would I would prefer here to decompose the OR vector into two components uh, rather than decomposing the weight force vector. So this piece here is all weight perp. So in this example, uh, to find the torque due to the weight, it is negative. It is a negative torque, so the clockwise torque. So it's going to be negative or weight per times the weight itself. So that's negative 0.38 meters. So sorry to add in the details here. So um, I know this angle in here is 30 degrees. So just to sort of a uh, little extra work here if you're trying to think. So we know the arm is at 30 degrees below the horizontal, which means that this angle in here is also 30 degrees. So you can either do the 0.38 times the cosine of 30 or 0.38 times the sine of 60. So I'll use the cosine of 30 degrees here. I'm trying to find this side here. Um, times the weight um, and from the problem so back here. The, we're told the mass of the arm is 4 kgs. So this is 4 kgs times 9.8 meters per second squared. This leaves us with the torque of... negative 12.9 newton meters. Now if I drew a diagram for the dumbbell force, it would be ident almost identical to the diagram I've drawn for the weight force. So just to say some room here. Um, the, only, the only difference would be is that the size of our uh, deltoid would be uh, 0.85, the full length of the arm. So the torque for the deltoid... Um, oh, sorry, sorry, excuse me, the torque due to the dumbbell. Um, yeah, not to confuse, again, confuse the delta and the dumbbell. Again, it is also a negative torque. And this again, I would do or for the delta head force perpendicular times the size of the delta head force. So this is negative 0.85 meters times the cosine of 30 times the size of the delta head force, and that one is given in the problem as uh, 41 newtons. Yeah, so the dumbbell is exerting a downward force of. 41 newtons. This gives me a torque of negative 30.2 newton meters. Okay. So we found the two torques due to these two, which are largely negative. Um, and I want to, I know that the net torque on the previous page I solved for. 1.25 newton meters. So uh, this is what I'm going to um, 
kind of solid enough for the top of the delta. Okay, so we know that the net torque as a vector equals torque of F D plus torque weight plus torque and dumbbell. So I'm doing the torque for the deltoid. That's the net torque minus torque weight minus torque delta uh, dumbbell. And we know this from the previous page is 1.29 newton meters minus, and this is where you have to be careful with your signs. So um, these are vector quantities, so I'm going to take into account their sign when I'm uh, summing them. This is minus times a negative torque minus minus 30.2 newton meters. And if you put all this together. torque by the deltoid is a uh, 44.3 newton meters. So hopefully the signs here are not, uh, not too confusing. So if you think about the two of these together, uh, it's about 13 plus you know, 30, so about 43-ish newton meters. Um, in the negative, uh, or we're assumed to we're called the negative uh, direction, and we need a positive torque. So I hope it makes sense that the torque due to the deltoid is 1.29 meters in magnitude larger than the sum of the magnitudes of the two clockwise torques. So hopefully this number makes sense. So that's what we know the size of the deltoid torque. Now, if we think about um, picture over here. So if I draw the OR vector for the um, let's switch up the colors here. If I draw the OR vector for the deltoid, so OR FD and the deltoid force um, here I'm just sort of changing up the magnitudes just for clarity in the diagram. Um, so in the previous diagram, this is uh, 14 degrees is the angle between the two. So I would prefer here to decompose the deltoid force into a vector that is perpendicular to that. So this would be my F deltoid perp. And this is F deltoid. So that would be linked to the F deltoid and the sine of that angle. This is the 14 degrees. So from down over here, I'm going to write that the torque of F deltoid, it's positive. So I know that it's going to be F. So I'll write that as uh, or FD times FD perp, which is or FD times the FD times the sine of 14 degrees. We know that this all equals 44.3 uh, newton meters. So my FD would be equal to my torque FD divided by R FD times the sine of 14 degrees. This is the 44.3 newton meters divided by the 0 0.05 meters. Just to show you that comes from, that's uh, 5 centimeters here. And times the sine of 14 degrees. And the size of the delta and force is pretty large. What's that to be? 3670 newtons. Due to its very, very small moment arm, it needs to balance both the torque, not, not just the balance, actually needs to be larger than the sum of the clockwise torques. So given its small disadvantage in its moment arm, it needs to have a very large force in order to cause the arm to have a positive angular acceleration. Yeah, it's a pretty challenging problem overall. And let's just assume I have to see these in the whole page.